there's the physical infrastructure associated with the lighting itself. Uh, as you're trying to increase the opportunities for, for sensors to accumulate data, mm -hmm. as you're trying to increase the opportunities for things to be able to communicate with other things or people to communicate with things or to accumulate data, both stationary and as it's moving past these physical uh, system, the lighting infrastructure provides a ready-made physical base to be able to launch that kind of sensoring. It's a wonderful day that we live in that we can access data to make smart decisions. Uh, the problem is sometimes that's overwhelming and we've got to be more thoughtful, more strategic about how we use data. We've got to choose what is on our uh, dashboard that is more critical than other information. So all data is not created equal. And so we need to think through with our partners about how do we get the insights. We need to move from data to insights to be able to make to take action. The lighting that we have downtown in our streetcar line with the sensors, imagine and with open data and the data that we collect, but the light at the street corner of 12th and Main, fictional location, mm -hmm. <laughs> can tell a potential restaurateur how many people are standing on that corner between the hours of 5.30 and 8 p.m. every night and whether or not that might be a good place for a restaurant, while it's simultaneously adjusting the lighting for that number of people. Not so many people, bring it down, save some money. A lot of people bring it up, make it safer and brighter. So there's a lot of things that go into it. And, and once again, the theme that is consistent, I think, in all of this is technology is merely a tool to help make people's lives better. Yeah. And the smart city knows how to smartly use the technology. Mm -hmm.